is Houston. Say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. We've had a main B bus undervolt. Roger, main B undervolt. Okay, stand by, 13. We're looking at it. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Left Hand Reviews, and today we're going to look at a cute little game called Launchpad. Launchpad was uh, released in 2010, designed by Melanie James, and released by Stratus Games. It plays in about 30 to 60 minutes with 2 to 4 players. So let's take a look at what comes in the box, and then I'll show you how to play. So inside the box of Launchpad, we have a full color game manual. It's pretty short, only maybe about 10, 11 pages long. Uh, it gives an overview of all the rules, and since this is a card-based game, it does give an overview of all the different cards in the game, which is nice, a nice reference. And we have a bunch of cards here. There are 140 different cards, and they're on a very nice uh, matte linen card stock, um, and they're, they're very nice um, weight and feel to them. So let me uh, set up a quick game, I'll explain the different types of cards, and then I'll show you how it plays. So the first thing I should do is probably explain the various uh, cards that are in the game. So the first thing we have here is a nice player uh, summary card, and this shows how you're going to set your gameplay area up. You can see there's three zones, a construction zone at the bottom, a quality control zone, and a launch zone. So you're going to start by placing your rocket ships down in that construction zone, and they're going to move up to the quality zone, and then the launch zone as the game goes by. And then on the other side of the card here, you have a summary of the game uh, turns, the setup, all the points at the end of the game, and each of the different card types. Here we have the components for the rockets. Rockets re are going to require both metal and fuel, and depending on the particular rocket, it, it's going to require varying amounts. Here is a rocket card, and you can see that this rocket card requires one metal and one fuel. You see it there on the side? Also, you can see those three square boxes on the left-hand side there. That indicates where this card is placed. That's a really nice feature of this game, is all the cards have those boxes that shows you the initial placement of a particular card. You can see that the box on the bottom is colored in, and the bottom box is always red. The middle box is yellow, and the top box is green. Each of those boxes just indicates the three different uh, zones that I talked about earlier the construction zone, quality control zone, and launch zone. So you can see that this is initially placed into the construction zone, as all the rocket cards are. And you can see the two uh, white boxes above it and the white arrow indicate that this card is able to be placed in the other zones, or able to be in the other zones, but it must start in that bottom construction zone and then moves up. So again, we can look at this fuel card. You can see that that has the red square filled in with the arrow and then the white box above it, meaning this will start in the construction zone as well and move up the zones. So let's move to uh, another card type. These are bonus cards. The blue cards, bonus cards, are the ones that you add to your rocket. And you can see this has the top box square filled in there, which is green, which indicates that this can only be placed uh, into the launch zone. And actually, these bonus cards are added to your rocket ships that are already in the launch zone. The maximum security one, for example, is going to guard you against a lot of the uh, attack cards that your opponents are going to play against you, so that's a really handy card to have. And here we have an astronaut card. Now, the astronaut card uh, will give you bonus points as long as he's in your rocket as well as the oxygen bonus card because your astronaut's going to need oxygen to breathe. So if you have an astronaut and oxygen in a launch zone on a rocket at the end of the game, you're going to get, I think it's plus four points. If you have an astronaut and no oxygen, well, that's bad news, so you're going to lose points. And if you just have oxygen, for example, uh, it's neither here nor there, so it's a net of zero points. You have the red cards, which are the action cards, and you can see that this has no boxes shaded in here, meaning that this is not placed in any of your zones. You just play the card, uh, enact its effects, and then place it on the discard pile. So this particular one is called a Bort Mission and says, 
move one of any player's rockets, including its component and bonus cards, back to the discard pile. So this is a really, really nasty one to, to play on your opponents. Uh, here we have a, uh, a special card. These are called the, uh, yeah, the specialty cards. And these you're going to place all on the uh, side of the game board. You can see that none of those boxes are shaded in, but there is a little white arrow uh, pointing to the right, which means this is going to be placed on the far right side of your gameplay area. You can have one of these specialty cards in play at a time, and it basically augments the rules to your benefit. This one says, increase your hand limit to 8 instead of 6. So these are nice to have. You can always replace these with another one, and you would just put out the new one, and this one would get discarded. Here we have our experts. There are three different experts, uh, depending on what uh, zone that they go into. You have the uh, engineer. You have the engineer that is going to go into the construction zone, the inspector that goes into the quality con uh, control zone, and you have right here the mission controller which actually goes into the launch zone. And there's also a jack of all trades which is a wild, can be placed in any zone. And finally we have a piece of a rocket ship. So there are four of these cards which when put together uh, completes a rocket ship and you can see that this is placed in the construction zone and these are going to be moved uh, closer and closer to the launch zone and they will eventually assemble a rocket ship and this just indicates the end of the game once the rocket ship is completed then everyone has one more turn so let's go through a game round and this will make a lot more sense so I'm going to simulate the first turn of the game, which is actually going to be a little bit abbreviated uh, than the future turns, and you'll see why. Because the first thing that you do on your turn is you advance any launch pad cards. That's these cards here that indicate the end of the game, but at the beginning, there are none of those out, so you're not going to do that. The next thing you'll do is advance any of your completed rockets. Again, we don't have any completed rockets at this time. Then you draw up to your hand limit, which by default is six. So I'm going to draw six cards out of here. Then you can play as many cards as you want or can uh, during the this phase. So let's say the first thing that I'm going to do is play a rocket card out of my hand. So that's going to go in my construction zone. This imaginary bar here will be a construction zone. And let's say I also want to, uh, since this requires one fuel and one metal, I have a fuel in my hand, so I'm going to play that on my observer. And, oh, I just happen to have a metal, so I'm going to play that on my observer. Since I've then completed the material requirements for this rocket, I can tuck them underneath, and then this is going to be ready to move to the next launch zone. But, you cannot move a rocket to the next launch, or, to, I'm sorry, to the next, um, to the inspection zone. And you cannot move to the next zone until you have the expert for the zone that you are currently in. So I'm going to have to wait until I get uh, an engineer out here before I can then move this up. So let's fast forward a couple turns into the game and you can see here I have my construction zone and my engineer here. So let's pretend it's the beginning of my turn now. So the first thing I'm going to do is move all launch pad cards up one. That's these game uh, ending cards. So that's going to move up one to the next zone. Now. It doesn't matter, uh, these cards move up regardless, it doesn't matter if there is an inspector there or not, or I'm sorry, an expert there or not, it's always going to move up once each turn. Uh, if there are multiple uh, ones of these in one zone, you choose one and only move one up. Once it gets to the third zone, which is the launch zone, during the phase when you would move it, it moves over to the side of the table, where you will then begin assembling it. So each time one moves up three, and blasts off, you add it to the zone over here, and once the uh, card is completed, like so, then that's going to signal the end of the game. But to get back to this example, it was here, it moves up a zone. The next thing we do is you move up your completed rockets. Now we're going to assume that I already added all the uh, materials to all three of these rockets, Actually, let's pretend that this one is not quite completed yet. 
so it's going to be sitting there. So I have two completed rockets that are going to move up to the next zone, but you can only select one to move up from each zone. So since my Intrepid is worth the most points, you can see this one has a point value of 10, I'm going to choose to move that one up, and it's going to move to the next zone, which in this case is the quality control zone. The reason I can move it up is because I have an engineer specialist here. Then I'm going to draw my cards and play as many cards as I want or can. So I'm going to decide to play the fast track card, which says advance one of your completed rockets directly to the launch zone. So I'll play that into the discard pile. This rocket is completed. I'm going to move it boom, boom, all the way up to the launch zone here. So now it's ready to launch. Now, at the beginning of your turn when you move the rockets up, if there's a rocket uh, or rockets already in the launch zone, it's just going to stay there. It's only these ones that will move off to the side of the game board or the game area. So it's going to stay there. So now that it's up there, I have a couple more cards in my hand. One of them is maximum security. So I'm going to add this maximum security uh, bonus card to the observer here because that's going to protect me against a lot of the attack cards. Uh, that my opponents are going to try to play on me. And I also have an astronaut card, so I'm going to take the risk and add it, the astronaut there and hope that by the end of the game I get an oxygen on there as well so I get the bonus points instead of the negative points. Then at the end of my turn, let's say I've played all the cards that I want to or can, I can discard any number of cards from my hand and then uh, I end my turn. Now the reason it's important to decide whether you want to discard or not is because when you draw cards, you're allowed to draw one card out of the discard pile. So you need to be careful of what you're discarding because whatever is top on the discard pile, you know your opponent can take. So let's say these cards I don't need, I'm going to discard them. And that is the end of my turn. Now let's fast forward and let's say my opponent goes and now it's my turn again. Well, first we move up the launch pad cards. That one's going to go up to the launch zone. Then I move up rockets. Oh, I can't move this one up because the quality uh, inspector is not here. So this is still stuck here. And I can't move this one up because it's not completed. And of course this one's already in the launch zone so it still sits there. So that's the end of the movement of the rockets. Then I'm going to draw my, my six cards or however many cards um, brings me up to my hand limit of six in case I kept any over from the previous turn. And then I see, okay, I drew an inspector. So I'm going to place an inspector here. So now on the next turn, this guy is going to be able to move up. Now you got to be careful because just because you have some rockets sitting up here in the uh, launch zone doesn't mean that they're safe. And I kind of alluded to that with that maximum security card. Because, for example, my opponent could play this sabotage card, which says, Steal one component card from any player's rocket, move it back to the construction zone, if not already there, and discard bonus cards. So, for example, if this card didn't have the maximum security that protects against sabotage, and they played this card on me, they could steal any component. So let's say they were in need of a metal. They'd steal the metal from me. And just because they steal this card doesn't mean they have to actually take it into the hand or use it. They can just discard it, which is a big, you know, screwage move. Then this guy has to go all the way back to the construction zone, and it loses all its bonus cards, so we lose that. So now this guy is not completed. He needs to be recompleted by adding another metal, and then he can start the slow trek back up to the launch zone. So you can see there is a fair amount of conflict in this game because of the different ways you can attack your player's rockets. And it's really important to get the uh, various perks that we're going to prevent against uh, those kinds of attacks. There's also some cards that can uh, steal the specialists from your neighbors, uh, from your opponents. So that's a great way to prevent them from now moving up rockets. And there's some uh, specialty cards, those green cards, that are going to protect against that. For example, this one, Security System. Protects all of your rockets from sabotage, abort mission, and vacuum initiated by the opponent. And employment contract. Protects all of your experts from recruitment by an, op by an opponent. Recruitment is the action card that allows you to steal the experts from an opposing player. So that's really all there is to the game. At the very end, you're going to tally up points. So let's say this is a, 
a game end condition. And I'll just quickly go over the, the point values. For every rocket that you have in the launch zone at the end of the game, you're going to get the full number of points. For every rocket in the uh, inspection zone, you're going to uh, just get zero points, so they net out. And for every rocket still in the construction zone, you're going to get negative points equal to the rocket's value. So this would be worth negative six points. Also, I mentioned the astronauts and oxygen up in the um, launch zone. If you have astronauts and oxygen, you get plus four points. If you have the astronaut without the oxygen, you get negative four points. But if you just have oxygen, uh, that's no big deal. So there's no points given or taken. Also, if you have a quality certificate, which is this particular card that's been attached to your rocket, it's actually added here in the quality zone and we'll move up with it, then you're going to get a bonus of three points. If you don't have a quality control certificate, or quality certificate, then it's worth obviously no points. It's not a requirement. And finally, if you don't have a mission controller in the launch zone, you're going to get negative ten points. Because obviously, since we're not going to be moving rockets from this top zone, you don't have to have a uh, specialist up here, that mission control specialist, but if you don't have them there, uh, you get negative 10 total points. So it's a good idea to have them up there. So let's wrap this up, I'll tell you what I think. Launchpad is a, is a pretty fun little uh, filler game. I'm not a huge fan of the artwork uh, because it's a little too simple, a little too cartoony for me. But uh, I know it appeals to some people, and that's fine. Uh, artwork alone is not going to ruin or make a game for me. Uh, the game, like I said, it's fun. It's relatively quick. Uh, there's a lot of player interaction because of that screwage. Um, and that is going to appeal to some people and not to others. Uh, a uh, player that I played with earlier today really didn't enjoy that aspect of the game. Um, but uh, me, I kind of like it. Uh, one thing that I think uh, makes this detract from this game a little bit is the fact that there are just enough component cards to uh, complete each rocket. So, meaning there are exactly enough fuel and exactly enough metal to finish each rocket uh, that's included in the game deck, meaning there is no excess. So, there can be and there are multiple times when you will have rockets just sitting in that construction zone and can't move because you're not drawing any metal. Um, there's also a lot of times in the game when you uh, draw a whole hand of six cards, or eight in the case of the, one of the specialty cards that increases your hand size, and you can do absolutely nothing with those cards. You don't have any rockets, you don't have, you know, it, or you have some completed rockets and you draw a hand of all components and with nothing to do with them. So you end up just, you know, having no turn. Um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing per se, but if it happens over and over again, or you really need that, that mission controller, or you really need that uh, inspector so you can move up to, into the launch zone, and you're just drawing and drawing and drawing turn after turn, uh, and you're just not getting it, then that can be really frustrating. Uh, so, overall, I think it's a fun game, uh, but it's not without its flaws. It is definitely worth a play. Uh, it's it's very easy to learn. It's quick. I think it would be an exceptional family game uh, because I think uh, younger audiences could get into the artwork, would like building rocket ships, and uh, the rules are simple enough that I don't think there would be much difficulty there. So if you like what you saw, you like the artwork, you like the idea of building rockets, and you just want to light uh, a game that doesn't take a heck of a lot of brain power, I think Ro Launchpad is definitely worth checking out. Um, I think the price for it is very affordable, and it's a, it's a neat little game to have in your collection. So, it depends on what you thought of the game uh, mechanics from this review, so I leave it up to you to decide if Launchpad is for you. Thanks for watching.